Good day everyone, I am Arvin Abueba, BS Indotech Major in Automotive. In this video, I will be discussing the chapter 2, discussing the content of some primary sources in Philippine history. In the first subtopic of the chapter, which is the primary and secondary sources, it gives a brief of comprehensive explanation about the following. Historical research and writing being dependent on the availability of primary sources, documentary sources, secondary events, and testimonies of the authorities. It can be categorized into three types, written, material, and traditional. Each stated and writing sources can be subdivided into literary and official. The former, it is the interpretation of the writer which involves his subjectivity and while the latter is the record produced when transacting business and traditional sources such as folklore, oral tradition, epics, and indigenous materials are also used as sources of history. While material objects such as money, guns, church bells, and other materials serve as a part of the events that undeniably important sources of history. What is primary sources? Primary sources can be either written or non-written, sounds, artifacts, artwork, etc. It includes historical and legal documents, eyewitness account, data, pieces of creative writing, audio and video recordings, speeches and art objects, films, photographs, journals, letters, diaries, scrapbook, published books, newspapers, magazine clippings published at the time of the event, interview, eyewitness accounts, clinic reports, treatise government publications. What is secondary sources? Secondary sources are any account of something that is not primary source. Typical secondary sources. Published research, newspaper articles, scholarly and popularly books and articles, reference books, textbooks, and other media. Distinctions between primary and secondary sources. A primary source in a original document or other material that has not been changed in any way, while secondary sources are documents based on primary sources. Primary sources are immediate first-hand account of a topic, people who had a direct connection with it. Secondary sources are any account of something that is not primary source. Benjamin, 1994 referred to primary source and also primary evidence which record the actual words of someone who participated in or witnessed the events of described while secondary evidence record findings of someone who did not observe the event but who investigated the primary evidence let's proceed to the third subtopic Internal and external criticism Internal criticism deals with analysis of the content of the documents. This means that the historian should evaluate the relevance of content of the documents of the time and place phenomenon. External criticism deals with the analysis on the form of the documents. The criticism allow the historian to evaluate the authenticity of the documents by giving importance to the author of the documents and the time when the documents is writing. Both criticism are not only very important tools in establishing the validity of historical writing but also in establishing the validity of, of the discipline of the historic history and academic discipline. Sa aking mga kababata, Bayo Serizal, 
Kapag ka ang bayay sadyang umibig sa kiyang saitang kaloob ng langit. San lang kalayaan na sa ring masapit katulad ng ibong na sa himpapawid. Pagkat ang saita isang kahatulan sa bayan na yot ng mga kaharian. At ang isang tayo katulad ng kabagay na alin ng mga likha noong kalayaan. Ang hindi magmahal sa kanyang salita mas mahigit pa sa malansang isda. Kaya ang marapat pagyamaning ko sa natulad ng isang tunay na napagpala. Ang wikang Tagalog tulad din sa Latin, sa Ingles, katsila at salitang anghel. At ang puong maal maalam ng tumingin ay siyang magawad nagbigay sa atin. Ang salita natin huwad din sa iba na may alfabeto at sariling letra na kaya nawalay binat na ng sig sigwa ang lunday niya walang noong dakong una. This poem of Rizal, which as stated earlier, is being contested by someone historians as not authored by him, express his understanding of nationalism and shows his youthful idealism. In this poem, can be gleaned his strong desire to wake in and nationalism of her fellow men, strongly arguing them to love their own native language. The last subtopic is the nation and national history, the Katipunan. La Liga Filipina was group created by Dr. Jose Rizal on July 3, 1892 in the Philippines. The aims were to unite the whole archipelago into which society with equality from Filipinos and Spaniards in the Philippines. Mutual protection is very want and need, defense against all violence and injustice, Encour encouragement, instruction, agriculture, and in commerce, and today and application of reforms. Jose Rizal tried very hard to make it peaceful group, but Spanish authorities considered it dangerous. On the night of July 6, 1892, Rizal was secretly arrested four days after its creation. The following day, Governor Yoholio Dispujol ordered Rizal to be apported to the Pitan. After Rizal's arrest, La Liga Filipina became inactive. Then it was reorganized by Domingo Franco and Andres Bonifacio. The society broke apart into two separate groups, the Cuerpo de Compromisarios which promised to continue supporting La Solaridad in Spain and the Katipunan in the Philippines. Bonifacio and the Katipunan, 1892-1896 the failure of the reform movement led even the reformists like Marcelo H. Del Pilar to think of revolution. Insurrection. Del Pilar worked in La Solaridad. is the last rem day, especially when the people have acquired to believe that peaceful means to secure the remedies for evils from futile. The founding of the Katipunan. On July 7, 1892, the newspapers published the news about the arrest of Rizal of previous night of the Governor General's order to banish him to the Pitan. Patriotic Filipinos meet at House on Ascaraga Street, Manila, now Claro M. Recto Avenue. This man was where Andres Bonifacio, Chuduro Plata, Valentin Diaz, Ladislao Diwa, Diodato Arellano. They organized the secret society called Kataas-Taasan, Kagalang-Galangan na Katipunan ng mga anak ng bayan, KKK or Katipunan, the aims and structure of Katipunan. Andres Bonifacio laid down the three primary objectives of Katipunan, civic, political, and moral. Civic was based on the principle of self-help and defense of the weak and poor. Political 
was the separation of the Philippines from Spain to secure the independence of the colony. Moral Focus on the teaching of good manners, hygiene, and good moral character. That's the end of my report. Thank you. Searching for the Queen Published in Lipang, Calabaw on January 18, 1908 This editorial cartoon depicts the search for beautiful women who could join the Carnival Queen contest. This activity had become a big annual event which consumed the interest and time of the American colonial government in the country. It had become so popular particularly to the wealthy Filipinos, Filipino families and was considered an effective method used by the Americans in molding the Filipino minds in the way of the colonizers which was supportive of the capitalist interests. The launching of the Manila Carnival coincided with the conflicts between the American colonial government officials and the Filipino leaders. The first women who joined the contest all belonged to the wealthy families in the country. They were Josefina Ocampo, Purita Villanueva, Leonardo Limhap, and Pilar Reyes Cubarubias. It was also severely criticized since there were serious national issues that needed to be focused on that on at that time. One of these issues was public health since the cholera outbreak had already claimed a number of lives, one of the victims of which was Apollinario Mabini. But it could not be denied at the Manila Carnival was very popular. In fact, many prominent personalities in the nation's history became active in the search for a queen. The cartoon shows how strong the desire of the United States to turn the interest of the Filipinos to popular American culture. This was a clear indication of the colonial government's intentions to divert the intention of the people from the real situation. This was a way of directing and reframing the Filipino consciousness to American popular culture and to divert the attention of the people from the problems besetting the country. A public post is not hereditary crown. Published in the Independent on May 20, 1916. This political cartoon shows what seems to be transfer of the crown by Mr. Santos, a politician from Tondo, to Dr. Barcelona, his brother-in-law, as if the position he occupied was his personal property which he could give to another he liked. This caricature scene is still very much relevant today. Despite the constitutional provisions prohibi prohibiting political dynasty, this political practice of many family in the country is still very prevalent. This editorial cartoon in 1916 pointed to the way bureaucracy was treated as an extension of the family's pro properties. Many political leaders betrayed the trust of the people and their greed for power engulfed them. They made the government their milking cow, a totally departure from what the concept of service was before the colonial time when both the chiefs and the government worked for the welfare of all and not their own interest only. Today, the interest of the individual, his family, and his political allies is paramount in the minds of many elected officials. It is not a surprise anymore to see a family occupying almost all the important positions in local and national governments. The electorate today should be educated in voting wisely. Popularity should not be the prime consideration in choosing a candidate. 
Many of those running for elective positions in government rely on the family name, names even if they not have the qualifications for the positions. And the country suffers because they do not have genuine interest in serving the country and its citizens. Elective positions for them are merely sources of lucrative income. This scene shows passing of the crown or political position. A politician is passing the crown or the position he had to someone related to him and a Filipino guy wearing a salakot stops him from doing so while well, telling him that it's not for the other guy to begin with. According to my understanding of the caricature, the situation involves a political dynasty because one man wants to transfer the throne to another man, while another man wearing salakot and barong Tagalog is attempting to prevent the transfer. It means that because he is unique, a well-known and re respected individual cannot transfer his position to other people, his charismatic appeal to others is different. Is the police force bribed published in the dependent on June 9, 1917? This picture was penciled by Fernando Amorsolo. It was a critic of the routine system in the colonial bureaucracy, especially in the police force. Amorsolo's caricature of the Chinese is a lowly character was indicative of the painter's attitude toward the Chinese who he believed were responsible for corrupting the authorities. We can still find some similarities of this situation in the present Philippine society. Corruption is still one of the serious problems besetting the country. Every Philippine administration was tried its best to address the problem, but it seems no solution is at hand to check this malady that had been ingrained in the character of the people. And the police image is continuously tainted by unscrupulous members of the police force who do not only commit corruption but engage in other cr criminal activities like drug pushing, smuggling, kidnapping and other criminal acts with which definitely betray public trust. This cartoon depicts the first of Manila's periodic police scandals. In 1997, a mysterious informant named Pedro Chua wrote the Philippines Free Press, alleging that senior police was accepting bribes from Chinese gobbling houses in Binondo and Quiapo districts. Demonstrating the power of Manila's leading weekly newspaper, publication of Chua's letters spark allegations that led eventually to the suicide of the police chief. After a series of sensational charges and counter charges, the free press finally withdrew his, its illegal allegations. Where the Mosquito is King, published in the Philippines Free Press on April 16, 1921. This editorial cartoon was a criticism against the Board of Health because of its failure to address a problem of mosquitoes in the Metro Manila which caused the outbreak of numerous diseases in Metro Manila during that period. The failure to address this problem was blamed to the transfer of government administration from the Americans to the Filipinos as provided for in the Filipinization program of Governor Francis Burton Harrison. This was, in a way, a direct challenge to the readiness of Filipino bureaucrats.
to fill up the grub in the bureaucracy. Today, despite and advices in science, the country is still besides my problems in health and sanitation. Metro Manila, for one, has become so dirty that mosquitoes and other insects and pests abound. What are the elective local executives doing? What measures have been taken to address the same problem which besieged the metropolis then and still is very much present in the country today? How qualified, committed, and dedicated are the official appointed to important posts like the Department of Health to attend and check the outbreak of diseases and epidemics. This scene built on a swamp and ringed with streams and ponds, Manila is natural breeding ground for malarial mosquitoes. During the 19th century, Spanish public health procedures were grossly inadequate to the imperatives of Manila's site and the Americans found the city of Kespol of ill health when they occupied at in 1898. With their experience in tropical health gain in the Caribbean, Americans made major advices in epidemic disease control during the first decades of the rule. Through a arbitrary application of public health regulations, the Board of Health brought tropical disease, small, smallpox, cholera, cholera, and plague for 4,386 people died in Manila, a mild toll compared to previous outbreak in the late 19th century. I am Chris Lee A. Amis. Based on my research about the result speech at the banquet in Madrid in the honor of the Filipino painters Juan Luna and Felix de Selección Hidalgo. During his speech, Rizal made it clear that the victory of Luna and Hidalgo brought peep pride and honor to both the Philippines. Where they are where they are born and the kingdom of the Spain where they were polished into greatness. These two painters, fellow citizens, are proud, admiring their work and can see they are the source of their inspiration and the motivation for creating such as art results interpreted these two artists' work during his speech. Juan Luna painted the famous polarium which he entered in the Madrid Exposition of the Bellas Artists and won a gold medal. The painting's polarium displays a tragic event. Rizal's speech stated that Luna expressed in his work the strong slavery cry and the metallic rattle on corpses' armor as well as orphan sobs and murmuring prayers with as much intensity and realism as if it was really happening in real life with virgins, Christians, Exorcists, AI. Felix Resurrection Hilargo was also honored with a silver medal for his work. One of the sleeveless leans against the wall his eyes fixed in the heavens while the other sits on the ground. Her back arc and applicant agony, Hidalgo depiction of the Philippines under Spanish rule can be seen again. The half stripped females represent the Filipinos who have snatched their dignity away, beauty and light, and symbolized by the woman and the light poking up. The future generation were mentioned several times in Rizal's speech. Polarium and Virgin Christians were awarded to Juan Luna and Felix Hidalgo. The Philippines and Spanish both gained recognition as a result of this accomplishment. Jose Rizal took advantage of the gathering which included Filipinos, Spanish politicians, the variety of pointers and writers to further his propaganda effort. 
the propaganda movement seeks equality with the Spaniard in all aspects of life. A toast to Juan Luna and Hidalgo by result is proof that the Filipinos can achieve greatness on a par the Spanish Britain. For him, people need to realize that Filipinos deserve equal treatment because of their talents and excellence. Another point of merit was to point out the disparity in treatment and access to political power between the two races. Luna and Hidalgo's achievements in the field of art also paved the way for future generations of Filipino artists, inspiring them to continue creating and promoting Philippine culture. Their legacy continues to be celebrated to this day, and their contribution to Philippines' art and culture will always be remembered and honored. And based on my summary about the Sporarium, the analogy of dead gladiators, the Sporarium is a painting by Filipino artist Juan Luna. It depicts the scene of dead gladiators being stripped of their armor and weapons after a battle in the Roman Colosseum. The painting is considered one of the masterpieces of Philippine art and it won't be first gold medal at the Exposition Nacional de Belas Artes in Madrid, 1884. The painting is named after the Spolorium, the part of the Colosseum where the bodies of dead gladiators were taken to be stripped of their armor and weapons. The gladiators were often slaves of criminals who were forced to fight to death for the entertainment of the Roman audience. The painting shows the bodies of the dead gladiators being dragged away by slaves while Roman senators and other, other spectators look on. The Sporarium is powerful and thought-provoking work of art that reflects on the brutality and violence in the gladiatorial games in ancient Rome. It serves as analogy for the human condition of the fleeting nature of life. The, play, the painting invites the viewer to consider the impact of violence and death on both individuals involved in the society that witnesses it. Again, I am Chris Liam Ice, reporter for, for Group 2. Hello sir, I am the reporting of the Philippine Free Press, The Reign of Terror, and it, is, it was published on February 28, 1920. This caricature shows one of the biggest challenges faced by Metro Manila at the start of American administration. The streets of Metro Manila were narrowed and designed for pedestrians and cases only. The increasing number of automobiles became threat of the public. The policies in this problem were not responsive to the change brought about the numerous vehicles and pedestrians roaming the street. It becomes threat to the lives of Filipinos because it brings us pollution that can cause an illness. So let's move on to the second second topic entitled um, the why worry it is it was published on august 22 1931 this cartoon shows the geographical realities the city of metro manila situated at the mouth of pasig river this also shows the poor condition of the capital's drainage and sewerage system this editorial cartooning blamed Filipino bureaucrats who did not continue the program initiated by the American predecessors. So, how can we say that it is really the scene, scene of the Filipino bureaucrats? Because um, they were not able to continue the program initiated by the American predecessors, which is uh, which can affect a good effect every Filipinos and 
could help us away from the diseases because of this system but suddenly it was not uh, it was not it was not followed by the Implement. Filipinos Implement. which um, which the Americans want to implement so now we will go to the another topic with this dirty municipal politics it is written on it was written on November 23 1940 um, many politicians are coding and protecting many bad elements in society for their own interest yes really that is really true because many polit many politicians ha um want just want to be a uh, just want to be called um politician because they want to have what they want oh um during election time they spend so much bribing the electorate many of whom are willing victims of those running for elective positions and it is still happening today but electorates seem not to learn from dirty tricks used by politicians election after election the cheap gimmick sort of politicians sort of politicians are elected to office and allowed to enjoy the luxury and perks attached to their positions um, as what i say on the first line many politicians had dirty tricks just to win and to in and just to enjoy uh, the luxuries and to buy what they want and to be fame uh, nor to be uh, to be known and to have power so for this yes and it is happening till now because many um many filipinos uh just want to be victim because of money yes money is a life juice so now let's move to equal work and equal salary why it was written of october october 23 1915 this editorial cartoon showed the unequal treatment given to teachers during american period the american teachers were paid more than the filipino teachers less but they performed the same job this shows the simple racial discrimination faced by the colonizers during this time the teachers the filipino teachers were paid n less than what american teachers were um, paid but they do the, they perform the same job so this simply shows that there is a discrimination on filipino teachers on that on the time so now we, let's move on to the new south and this is this was this was written on the new south or el nuevo sur this was written on april 5 1930 mindanao the land of promise this is where enticed to go for a brighter future the, mig the migration of christian filipinos to me <clears throat> to mindanao and occupying the lands which originally belongs to indigenous people is one of the causes of the conflict between the Christian and the Muslim Filipinos. Conflict which has existed for decades already. But until today, the promised land has been undeveloped. The government therefore must have to turn its attention to the development of Mindanao to arrest the problem which for decades has existed. So during this time, uh, not yes, until today, um, there are lots of conflict between the Christian and the Muslim Filipinos because of um, because Muslim a Christian wants to convert Muslim into Christian, so that there is really a conflict between. The two of them until today the promised land has been undeveloped
So that's all for my reports.